Alpha-synuclein is a protein that uh, is, is, was initially identified in the synapse and in the nucleus. Then the name synuclein comes from the fact that it was found in these two compartments. Mm -hmm. uh, then it was called alpha because soon after they found beta and gamma. So these mm -hmm. are proteins that are very similar to alpha-synuclein. They differ one more on the, the middle region, one more on the, the C-terminal region, but they belong to the same family. So there are th there's three synucleins. Alpha synuclein is, of course, the one that is uh, most studied because it's the one that we know is genetically linked to Parkinson's disease, and that, you know, attracts a lot of attention. What we know about its function comes actually from the work of uh, famous uh, scientists, uh, forgetting and like Tom Sudoff. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, he has, has done a lot of work on this protein and other colleagues uh, that worked with him and are continuing to work on this topic. And what we think is that this protein uh, interacts with membranes not in a conventional uh, way. It's not a, a typical uh, m protein that, uh, that uh, spans uh, membranes, but it, it binds laterally to membranes and it's thought that it's it could be important for uh, maintaining membrane curvature, of, in particular of synaptic vesicles, and that this uh, could be one of the functions of the protein to regulate synaptic vesicle uh, trafficking and biology, um, at least in neuronal cells. Mm -hmm. Now, those are ideas that are backed up by a, a lot of nice uh, literature. But this is only part of the story because this protein is not only abundant in the brain mm -hmm. where it's thought to account for almost 1% of total protein. So that makes a huge percentage of total protein in the brain. But it exists also in red blood cells and in platelets, in other tissues. And in the context of Parkinson's, no one is studying what this protein does in red blood cells. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, these cells, as we know, they, are, they, they don't have synaptic vesicles, so it's not there doing the same thing that he's doing in neurons. So this means we don't fully understand the function of the protein. We have these ideas that it may be involved in, in synaptic physical biology, but what it does in other cells and in other tissues is still not clear. And there's some recent data that is fascinating. We still don't understand it, but suggests that it may be actually important for as a to, to help cells respond to infection by bacteria and uh, eventually mm -hmm. by, or possibly also by viruses in ways we don't understand, but it seems that it may uh, help the immune system uh, deal with infections. And this is something that is, you know, being studied at the moment by, and by several groups. So I think in the coming years, we'll learn more about the function of the protein. And, and the idea is that we tend to be very simplistic and think one protein, one function, but biology uh, tells us that one protein may play different roles, may have different functions in different cells, in different tissues. And so this is something we need to be uh, considering. Neuroscience and beyond. No more. Get inspired.